never forget what we are here to commemorate tonight. 306 years ago, the overwhelming Catholic force led by the English king, James II, lay siege to our city of London Derry. Leprechaun, this is Shamrock. Come in. Go ahead, Shamrock. We are closing on the pot of gold. I say again, closing on the pot of gold. Roger Leprechaun, the pot of gold is prime. I say again, the pot of gold is prime. Roger, Shamrock proceeding. Over. As the weeks pass. Good luck, lads. Keep your heads down. A cat! came to be worth four shillings and sixpence. A mouse was worth sixpence. And a dog's head sold for half a crown. 20,000 Protestant souls defied the Catholic forces surrounding them. Our Protestant forefathers never capitulated, and neither shall we. <laughs> Three hundred and six years later, we Protestants are still surrounded. Well, tonight we reaffirm that not only will we not capitulate, but we will prevail. <laughs> evil, no matter where, 
no matter when and no matter what the cost. Peter, meet me in Geneva, would you? And, uh, JJ, when are we cleared for takeoff? And, uh, get me an ETA on Peter's arrival. JJ, are you there? This line seems dead. Well, where's JJ? He's indisposed, I'm afraid, Mr. Addington. <sighs> I'm sorry, sir. What the hell's going on here? What are you doing with my pilot? He's fine and ready to go to our destination, not yours. Who the hell are you? I'm afraid I can't tell you that, Mr. Addington, but if you and your secretary will have a seat, we'll be on our way. Where to? I'm afraid I can't tell you that either. My people are instructed not to pay ransom under any circumstances. Sit down, Mr. Addington. We have a schedule to keep. Get this aircraft off the ground, now. Any word yet? No, nothing. And the plane? The control tower cleared it 20 minutes after the last call from Mr. Addington. Then what happened? I just disappeared. OK, then call me back. What is this about a chopper? Well, apparently one's about to land on the roof any minute. Time's a wasting. Let's go. I bet it. Keep us posted. Lieutenant, well done. Thank you, sir. I would like some kind of explanation, General. I'm afraid the British government needs a little of your valuable time, Mr. Addington. I'm not in the habit of being hijacked to meetings by anyone, including the British government. Perhaps Lord Eames can explain, sir. I'm sorry to inconvenience you, Mr. Addington. Inconvenience? Is that what you call it? I think you will appreciate why these precautions were necessary. You may have seen some of these in the press already. The Pauli car bombings, credit to the IRA. Right. An extremely well-planned and orchestrated maneuver designed to silence the Reverend. Well, it worked, didn't it? I suppose you expect me to do something about it. You better tell me what happened. Certainly. In the last few months, responsible elements in both the Protestant and Catholic camps have been secretly negotiating a peace agreement through my office. Pauli was among the Protestants. Correct. We believe that he was killed by a militant faction opposed to any steps towards peace. We're hoping that you can help prevent the Reverend Pauli's successor from meeting the same fate. What makes you think I have the capability? Mr. Addington, we've had the occasion to monitor Mr. Sinclair's movements over the last few years while in your employ. We believe that with the cooperation of both of you, we'll have another chance to initiate the peace talks. Well, better explain what you have in mind and allow me to contact Sinclair immediately. I've taken the liberty of sending a helicopter to pick him up. Go 
going on. Do I ask you to explain the workings of the CIA bloody aid? Situation at bed, huh? I'll leave this with you, sir. Mr. Addington. Are you three all right? Oh, fine, fine. It was putting Miss Prevart through all this that worried me. I've learned that danger comes with the job, sir. You get used to it, believe me. How does Lord Eames fit into all this? I gather you know him. Damn right I do. Under Secretary of State for Affairs in Northern Ireland, cold, calculated, and about as immovable as stone bloody henge. <laughs> well, this has been his base of operations for the past 18 months. Catholic and Protestant leaders have been secretly channeling peace initiatives through this office. Does it have anything to do with the death of Ian Polly? I'm afraid so, yes. There are radically militant factions in both camps that have one hell of a lot to lose if peace ever comes. But someone must have got wind of a meeting that Paulie was about to attend. When's the big meeting? <laughs> That's being kept secret until the last minute. For security reasons. So tell us, sir, who is Ian Paulie's successor? Oliver Moncalm. And where is Moncalm now? Oh, he's preparing to leave for North America. Lord Eames suggested that Montcalm use my house outside Toronto for uh, his headquarters and as a haven for his family. Now, I'm not in the habit normally of offering your services to outsiders. You know that without informing you. But in this case, uh, I'm willing to make an exception. If you are. I see, so Lord Eames wants us to ensure that Oliver Montcalm makes this meeting with the IRA representatives. Interesting. You're getting warm. But I leave that decision to the three of you. If uh, you're going to take that risk, you should have the opportunity of discussing it amongst yourself. Paddington, when do you want us to leave? It's hard to believe this is somebody's private home. It's really beautiful. Mr. Addington's kind offer to lend us his home couldn't have come at a more opportune time. Well, the last thing that we want is a repeat of Londonderry. Oh, this is one of my associates, Miss Gabrielle Germont, Simon Osborne. Very nice to meet you. Pamela Carson. I think you'll find that the security in this house is about the best that there is. Including you and Mr. Mont, of course. And what exactly are the arrangements? Well, Mr. Montcalm and his family will be staying in the East Wing. Miss Germont will be directly responsible for them all whenever they're in the house. Follow me, please. As you know, Mr. Montcalm doesn't travel with his family for safety reasons. His wife and children will be arriving any minute, and we'll have our security pick him up later. And I'll be responsible myself for the security of the rest of the house, which will include the West Wing, where you both will be staying. You'll find the entire staff at your disposal. Please keep me appraised of your needs and your movements, and I'm sure you'll have a pleasant stay and a secure one. Thank you. Miss Germain will show you to your rooms. Mr. Sinclair. I'll have to speak to you alone. This is your room. It's lovely. All the lines are secured. Good. I'm sure they would be. There is a complete fax and a computer modem system in the library on the first floor. Excellent. Well, if you need anything else, don't hesitate to call. I won't. Good night. Thank you.
Yeah. Osborne's leaving. I know, I saw him. Any ideas? No. No, Mr. Osborne seems to think the less we know about his movements, the better. Needless to say, I don't agree. Needless to say, that's why I get paid the big bucks. I'm on him like grass on dirt. Suffering. I've missed you. I've missed you too. So, what have you told the others about us? As much as they needed to know. Good. <laughs> there isn't a week that goes by when I don't... regret what happened. I think I know now why it happened. And I don't hold you responsible for it. Osborne dumped the limo when he got into town. Then he met a couple guys at a motel. No ID yet, but I got some good shots of him. And these guys took a taxi over to this warehouse um, on the west side. You got me an address? 395 Jefferson Street. Got it. Just so you know where to find me, dear. <laughs> Look, you just take it easy, okay? that? It's my partner. Don't you start that again on me. What do you mean? You always keep it secrets from me. That was politics. Yeah. Politics. Look, things are very different now. Now that you're no longer with Scotland Yard. Oh, come on, Pamela. You know I found your brother's killers. Yes, but you didn't bring them to justice, did you? And you know why. 
Lord Eames's office stepped in for the sake of what they thought was the bigger picture. Oh, God. You haven't changed at all in three years. Inspector. Because of what happened, I quit the yard. That's why I'm working here for Addington. I thought you understood. Doesn't mean you've forgotten. Look, I'm sorry. Just please don't keep me in the dark this time. Fail me now. Never been used. The last 47's made under the old regime. Obviously. Cooper! <laughs> we made a deal for them in East Germany. What about the M16? Possible. Hermelite? Possible. What'll it take to do business? We only have two rules, cash and carry. That is also possible. Come on, boys. Time to go inside. You don't wait for your brother? No. <laughs> Come on. Whoa. They love it out here. Mm. It's no wonder. It's such a dream to them after playing in London, Derry. Mm -hmm. Where's the armor light? I'd like to take a look at it. <laughs> it's a shame they have to go through this. Oh, no, Miss Chamont, they're very lucky. You see, at least here, they're safe. Do you have any children? No, no, I've never been married. or <laughs> Only a brother killed by the IRA. You're Catholic, aren't you? Miss <laughs> Carson. I can assure you my religion does not in any way affect my work. I'm sure it doesn't. But if you'd seen some of the suffering that I've seen inflicted in the name of your religion, you could be just a bit worried yourself, wouldn't you? I'm sorry. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to go prepare for Oliver's arrival.
Are you okay? What the hell do you think? You want me to call the fire department? No, I am the damn fire department. How the hell do you think this would look down there? Well, if you're not going to give me a hand, get the hell out of the way. Hey, you okay now? Hell no, I'm not okay. I could have killed myself. Now I want the ice off of those pipes. What? The pipes? Yeah, the ice off the pipes. Now, one of my firemen come down here and they slip on that ice, they're gonna kill themselves. Now, I'm gonna be nice to you right now. I could give you a citation, but I'm not. But I'll tell you something. You see all the snow on this roof? I want the snow off of here. Clear! Is that clear? Good. I'll be back to check on you. What about the M16? Possible. Armalite. Possible. Well, uh, Mr. Smith, what'll it take to do business? That's Simon Osborne, the head of the paramilitary wing of the Loyalist Party. That's and the um, other two men with him? Where's the armor light? They've been identified as Jimmy Griffin and Alistair Lee, upstairs. activists. They disappeared underground about six months ago. Everybody thought they'd been hit by the IRA, but the bombing that killed the Reverend Polly exactly fit their M.O. They obviously resurfaced at a particularly opportune moment. Could Osborne have known about the peace initiative? He might have. He's well placed within the party. Yeah, but probably has the most to lose if it were ever successful. Absolutely. Um, get me uh, Peter Sinclair right away. That loyalist shipment arrived at a particularly appropriate time. The IRA paramilitaries have just been resupplied with arms as well. Your people must stop that shipment, Mr. Addington. Montcalm arrives in Toronto tonight. The meeting with his counterparts in the IRA will take place within the next 24 hours. Oh, thank you, Lord Ames. It makes it all so much more simple. Everything went fine at the airport, Pete. Good, JJ. Sir, Peter Sinclair. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Sinclair. And my compliments to your staff. <laughs> Thanks. Sir. And how are my two little leprechauns? Daddy! Come here. Ah, I feel good. And yep. Oh, we missed you. Oh, I missed you too. All of you. And I especially missed you. There they go again. <laughs> Oliver. <laughs> Hope you had a pleasant trip. Did. Um, the revised draft of your speech is ready if you'd like to go over it. And... Can I take my coat off first, Pamela? All right. Sorry, Oliver. Of course. <laughs> Look, sir, I'm sorry to do this to you after such a long flight, but we really do have to chat rather urgently. Uh, right. Uh, first things first, then Pamela will get to the speech later. Lead the way, Mr. Sinclair. Actually, Miss Carson can join us. Uh, fine. Please have a seat. We just heard from Alexander Addington's office. It would appear that your meeting with the other side will take place within the next 24 hours. They don't waste any time, do they? Nice chance to be detected. Let's hope that's their intent. Has the location been decided? No, not yet. I'm sure we'll only get word at the last moment, but I don't expect it to be before tomorrow. There's no way we'll be ready in time. Oh, yes, we will. Though there may be more riding on your meeting than we first thought. It appears that the bomb that killed Ian Pawley fits the M.O. of two of your paramilitary arm, Lean and Griffin. Well, that may be true, but Lean and Griffin are dead. Not as of yesterday. What are you saying? They were seen by one of my men making arrangements for a very large shipment of arms to Londonderry, with, amongst others, Simon Osborne. Osborne? Yeah, I'm afraid so. What are you saying? Are you saying that it wasn't the IRA that planted the bomb, that it was one of ours? Exactly. And there may be others. 
And I'm afraid we're going to have to wait for them to make a move to ensure that we get them all. If they should find out about your meeting with the AOA, it's a chance I'll have to take. What about my family? Are your wife and children are under constant surveillance? From now on, we'll restrict them to the grounds of the house. If you want, I can show you the arrangements we've made. That would make me feel a little better. If you'll excuse me, Pamela will get to that speech in about half an hour. Certainly, Oliver. Thank you. Peter, I just can't believe it. Pamela, can I have a word with you a minute? Tell me what you know about Osborne. He is and always has been an important part of our movement. He's a fixer, isn't he? <laughs> Simon Osborne has provided us with the means to protect ourselves. As head of the paramilitary wing, he has the most to lose if a peace pact is successful. <laughs> oh, you. Always worried about the politics, aren't you? Can't you see we are concerned with our survival here? But I thought your survival depended on the success of Montcalm's mission. All right. In terms of his power base, yes, Osborne does stand the most to lose by the peace initiative. But no one in their right minds wants this bloody struggle to continue. Yes, I know. And yet it has, though, hasn't it? In the last 300 years. Osborne doesn't know about the meeting with the IRA. He must have some idea that something's up. He may. But as long as he doesn't learn the exact location, one comes safe. Isn't he? Yes, of course. And that's why we should keep that particular piece of information to ourselves. Absolutely. Do you know where he is now, Osborne? He is keeping his own itinerary, but we do know where the arms are. Look, if he calls, you will tell me, won't you? But, Peter, all the lines are secured. You'd know if he called. Yes, of course. Mm. Oliver's speech. I left it in the library. All right. Go and get it. Thank you. Oh, and also, my glasses. Gentlemen, the tide of terrorism has begun to turn in the rest of the world. It's time to force that same change in Ireland. Mm. Oliver, mm. what's wrong? I'm skeptical of anyone who wants to force change anywhere, Pamela. It's just a figure of speech, Oliver. North Americans appreciate assertiveness, you know. Not when it's twinned with hostility. Come in. Sorry to interrupt. It's rather urgent. You're set for two o'clock this afternoon. Where? 
Small farmhouse. About two miles to the west of here. It's off the main road. Very secluded position. Only one road leads up to the house. That sounds safe enough. We'll make sure that it is. Are they happy? Reasonably. Though the slightest sign of any other members of your party, and they will call the whole thing off. I understand, Mr. Sinclair. Well, I'll be there with bells on. I think you should forget the bells. I think you're right, Miss Jamal. Oliver, you take care now. Thank you. So you'll be relieved to know that uh, the farmhouse checked out just fine. And don't worry about anything here. Thank you for taking care of the family. Yes, and I'm afraid we're going to have to push on. Your counterparts will have left already, and I want to take a few extra precautions on the way. Right. Shall we? Yeah. Good luck. Where's Pamela? She's in her room. boys are set up on the road. What are they looking for? A black car license, RBD 479. You'll hear the send-off. Right. Yeah. Black vehicle. RBD 479. Right, got it. Roger Stone, we're on track. Is everything all right? Yeah, so far, so good. as I'll ever be.
way, guys. Wait for me here. I'm checking it. Oh, Mary, close the door and lock it. All right. It's me, Pamela. I'm sorry, Mary, but Oliver just wouldn't listen. Pamela, please. Not the children. Mary, the only way to repair the damage done by your husband and Polly is to raise the stakes. The IRA will be blamed for the bombing and for your murders. Mary? Mary? You all right? Stop right there, Miss Shamont. You'll see the IRA proved to be more cunning than all of us. Not quite, Pamela. You could never understand. Yeah, you're right. We'll soon know if the IRA is going to keep their end of the bargain. Regardless, Mr. Addington, your help in this affair will be remembered, I assure you. So it's 50-50 whether or not they make the deal. Montcalm made the overture by refusing Osborne's shipment of arms destined for Londonderry. Despite what the IRA said, they still have others to answer to. Obviously, all of them are not going to be interested in peace. Obviously, politics. <laughs> well, that's what it's all about. Unfortunately, men like Paulie and Montcalm are are too often the victims. And so are their children. Well, I hope we've done a little something to change that course. You certainly have. We couldn't have done it without your help. You know, bloody well you could have prevented some of this. If you had allowed me to bring in the IRA killers who murdered Pamela's brother three years ago, she would never have been driven to such extremes. Someone else would have gone to the same extremes, Mr. Sinclair. You know that as well as I do. What I know is that as long as political gain is put before justice, these troubles will never end. You never did really understand politics, did you? Oh, on the contrary, Lord Ames. On the contrary. Thank you all. Cultivate the hearts and minds of the people, and you change the course of history. No doubt about that. But it all depends on who plants the seed.